What is going on guys? Grave here. Welcome back to Ghost of Tsushima. And today I'd like to show you a build that I used in game a lot in my first playthrough and that is a stagger melee style build. It uses one of my favorite gear sets in game which is the Gusaku's armor. If you have not unlocked it yet I will pop a video up in the top corner right now to let you see how to unlock it. It's kind of a grind to get it all done and completed to unlock but once you have this armor set it is definitely worth it. As you can see when it is fully upgraded you get a massive increase to health a major increase to stagger damage, and killing a staggered enemy restores 20% of your health. This build's kind of glassy. It's like those glass cannon style builds I'm sure you've heard about in RPG games and MMO style games. It really depends on you getting enemies to that staggered state and being able to kill them quickly to restore your health because you're not really going to have a lot of other uh, uh, charms or anything that's going to give you health back as you're going to see here uh, in the charm list. You could add some things in that would give you health back in this last spot. We'll talk about it here in just a minute when we get down to that uh, kind of part of the video. But this is mainly made for just straight up melee combat. I'm not going to try to butcher the first two uh, names of these charms here. But this very first charm is they must have for a stagger build. Of course the charm gives you staggering enemies, prevents interrupted melee attacks for 6 seconds. The next charm we're going to go with is dealing bonus damage while at 50% health or less. The reason I use this is because, like I said, you're going to be able to take a lot of damage, but if you're able to deal bonus damage, you're going to be able to get your health pool back quickly with that Gusaku's armor bonus uh, anytime you're killing a staggered enemy. The next thing you want to go with is the char uh, charm of bludgeoning. This is going to give you a moderate increase to stagger damage. So between this charm and the very first charm we talked about, plus the Gusaku's armor, you're getting a lot of bonuses towards stagger damage and just being able to stagger enemies in general. Next thing I'm going to go with is the Charm of Dual Destruction 2. I'm assuming there's a Charm of Dual Destruction 3. There's a lot of, you know, charms in the game. And a lot of them have, you know, like tiers of tier 1, 2, and 3. So if you have, you know, the Charm of Dual Destruction 3, definitely slap that on. But of course, the one I have gives you attacks, have a 10% chance to deal double damage. Any MMO or any RPG that I play, I always prefer to have percentage damage instead of just base damage. Because it seems if you can get that percentage damage to proc, you deal a whole lot more damage than you would with just a kind of base damage ability. The next charm I'm going to use is the Charm of Ferocity, which is a moderate increase to melee damage. This is a, a charm that I can hardly go without on any build. I, I really like this because anytime you're doing dealing melee damage, a moderate increase to that is always a big help. And last but not least, I decided to go with the Charm of Fortitude. You could change this up if you prefer. But this gives you a 20% chance to survive a lethal or any lethal damage and gain resolve, which resolve is very helpful if you're using abilities that use resolve, you're using the mythic abilities that use resolve. It's nice to gain some resolve back. But you could also put something for, you know, other kind of defensive charm here, something that will give you some health back. You could put another offensive charm here, whatever you liked. But I just kind of uh, was messing around with all the different charms, you know, kind of off and on when I was using this build. And this charm of fortitude seemed to help out a good bit. Now when it comes to techniques, anything in the deflection or evasion, I recommend you know having all those unlocked. But the main thing really if you're a melee style fighter is the stances. Getting these stances unlocked as soon as possible and unlocking all the uh, things underneath each you know tree for these stances is really key to being able to win a lot of melee style fights. Now of course some of these like in the water stance are going to help out with stagger damage. But just try to make sure that you're memorized all the different stance buttons so you can swap quickly and be very fluid. And make sure you know all of the different abilities you get within these stances. Because see, some of them will be hold, you know, triangle, then tap triangle. While some of them may be hold triangle once and tap it twice. You can get up to all the way, all the way up to holding, you know, triangle tapping it three times, four times, whatever the case may be. But make sure you know each ability that you have in each stance because a lot of these strikes will be able to defeat enemies very quickly. A lot of times you'll have an enemy staggered and you can uh, defeat them, you know, pretty much within a blink of an eye from one to the next. And like I said, with this build, you're going to need to be able to get your health pool back up as quickly as possible. Now, when it comes to ghost abilities, a lot of these abilities are great for other builds. But personally, for this build, I think that the standoff uh, tree here is great because once you're going into a fight and you know you're just going to be doing straight melee damage, you're just going to be hopping in, just doing melee fighting, uh, the standoff tree is great because you can kill enemies quickly uh, right off the bat and kind of get rid of some of the enemies that you're going to have to fight you know right from the start and not have to worry about you know those two three four five enemies being there once you start fighting everyone else 
And the last thing, of course, the ghost stance and the ghost kill streak. If you progressed far enough in the main story, I would recommend having these two unlocked for this build as well. Anyway, guys, I hope this kind of give you an idea of a, a unique build to use. Like I said, it might be frustrating to begin with because you can die quickly, but if you get the hang of it, you're going to pretty much have a big health pool that you're going to be able to keep up nonstop while fi fighting enemies and killing enemies very quickly as well. Anyway, of course, if you like the video, hit the like. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. If you are a subscriber, make sure you click the bell icon up in the top right corner so you know when all my videos go live. If you have a chance to share the video, please do. It does help out the channel a lot. And be sure to check out everything down in the description. My, the, of course, the affiliate GT Racing is listed down there. My Twitter and, of course, the community Discord. Any of that stuff you would like to join or just view, like I said, it's all down in the description below. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.